Finally, the last one. What about all of these? And all of these? Mother f I am I am we all want a fully painted army to put down on the tables and look absolutely spectacular. Some people think it helps with the immersion, other people just like how it feels to complete a project. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some batch painting. We're back, doing the same thing in a different way, starting off with that Vallejo model colour blue, and we're just going to push it through the airbrush because it's the easiest thing. Now, batch painting is pretty cool because it means we're going to pull out all the models in the unit and do the same things at the same time, just like edge highlighting. Once you pull out a colour, you basically just go through all the models, do the same sections with the same colour, and this really helps get those reps in, which will help your brush control in the future. Speaking of brush control, a lot of people will give the advice of using the side of your brush to pick out all the edges for edge highlighting, and typically that's really great advice, except there will always be a few sections where you will have to use the tip of your brush. And that's where batch painting can be really, really helpful, being able to get those repetitions of working over and over and over again with the same technique on generally the same models or the same kind of areas and edges is really going to help us in the future. If you're wondering why, I'm only picking out probably the lower two thirds uh, of the edges of the blue, it's because I've got another step in here and honestly it wasn't worth doing everything when I'm going to come back in with the airbrush to give a little bit of that glow. Now we had to pull magenta out here somewhere because this is a synthwave video and this is heresy for heretics. This is, a, this is really all we do. Picking out those same areas, we're gonna go with a little bit of glow, mostly on the top, but also on the inside of the legs. While it is gonna look a little bit OSL-y, OSL-y? While it's gonna look a little bit like OSL, what we're really doing is, we're again, going for that almost non-metallic styled color shift. Now we're gonna come back in with a little bit of Vallejo model pink and magenta from AK Interactive, just to kind of take off a lot of the heat and a lot of the brightness from the pink. And we're gonna pick out those magenta places that we just highlighted. Now, the idea that I'm using here is I'm actually using the eyes and the radius around, making these little circles, little globes, imagining where the eyes would be glowing out from and what they'd be hitting, because in the next few steps, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the eyes, and this is really gonna bring it together. But first, we're gonna to wanna to go back and resaturate everything with Familiar Pink from Army Painter. This is really gonna make everything pop, as well as blend in that magenta into the blue so it looks incredibly smooth. With the majority of the armor taken care of, we're going in with dark sea blue, which looks a little bit green, and we're gonna pick out all those little in-between spots. I still don't know what this stuff is made out of in law. I keep saying rubber, but people are disagreeing with me left, right, and center. It's also completely fine to hold your models in a weird way to be able to get your paintbrush where you want the paint to be pushed. We're also going to paint in all of those little gun pouches and little pockets. Mixing a little bit of ice yellow into that dark sea blue, we're going to go in and pick out just the highest edges of those in-between little section-y things that are definitely not rubber parts. And we're also going to highlight that on the gun pouches and all the little pockets. Pulling out some emerald, we're going to start to introduce a few more colours to actually make this thing look interesting. While it's the crests that I'm using as the example in this video, we're also going to use these same colours and same steps to pick out some of the other details that we're basically going to be using the same colours on. That means things like the purity seals, some of the weapon casings, and any other little detail with skulls. There'll be lots of skulls. There's always skulls. It's 40k. Moving on to the blue-green, I'm going to pick out probably about 70%, if not more. All we're really going to do is leave that emerald green in the recesses. This is going to become a mid-tone of sorts, but it's also going to act as our first layer of highlight, which I know sounds weird, but I'm going to jump back and forward between the two ideas, depending on the area, to if we want a little bit more highlight or if we want a little bit more shadow and contrast. Then mixing a little bit of AK Interactive's white in there, we're really just going to start to pull out all of the highlights. These are just going to be the sharpest corners and some of the biggest, brightest spots.
Even though the footage here is a little bit fuzzy, you can still see the highlighted sections of these details, and that's pretty cool. The eyes. Now, I tried a few different things out on the different models in the unit, and I came to the conclusion that it doesn't really matter. As long as you're using a very similar technique, or at least the same colors, you'll still come out with a generally pretty uniformed look. The eyes. Now, honestly, I tried a few different things on a couple of the different models, and I found out it doesn't really matter what you're doing, as long as you're using the same ideas. So what I'm actually doing here is pushing a lot of the orange from the outside edges into the center of the lens before dotting with a little bit of white and glazing back over with the orange. So we just know where the light's coming from. And now for the good part, that muzzle burn. That's probably why you're here to be quite frank. It is the biggest, most eye-catching part of this model. And for it, we need to start off with an incredibly opaque layer of white as our base coat. After three or four coats of white, we're gonna come in with that Imperial Fist Contrast Paint. Now this stuff is incredibly vibrant and I have been using it for quite some time for these kind of things. It's probably my favorite yellow to use when we're looking for overwhelming saturation. After our yellow is laid down, we're coming in with Deep Orange from AK Interactive and we're gonna pick out essentially two thirds of the entire muzzle. And what we wanna do is have a fantastic gradient. So just nice and smooth, going all the way back to a solid coat at the end and really just kind of wisping away into that yellow. I did lose a little bit of footage for the muzzle burn and that's just adding the white to the very end. So take all these steps and basically just put a splash of white right at the end but for now we're going into magenta after that orange and the same rules apply we want a nice opaque coat right at the end and it's going to thin out the further into the orange we go as always a massive thank you to our sponsors in games all their links will be in the description Batch painting can be pretty overwhelming, especially if you have mountains of miniatures to get through. But if you cut it down into a process of bite-sized pieces, the whole task is a lot less daunting. And sure, you don't get those little victories of finishing a whole model, but in roughly the same amount of time, if not less, you're gonna have an entire unit completed. Big love to all the Prismatic Heretics out there. And if you wanna help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in our description. See you next Tuesday.